You got a household without people. The mother's a Christian Baptist. The father is a Muslim and the daughter is a Buddhist. You know, that's straight confusion. But that's our people though. Right. That wood is going into Christianity. The cross. Our fathers didn't know nothing about no, no Christianity. Christianity was forcing our people whipped on our backs and now we just take, take heed to that nonsense. us and the first thing they say how you doing bro and the first thing they say is oh man nobody's perfect and I'm, I'm a sinner and all those different they'll admit they, they'll acknowledge that they're in the midst of sin and they they almost feel like they're not worthy to hear this gospel worthy to change themselves worthy of getting the kingdom of heaven so they resort to living a lifestyle of sin instead of trying to change well let's see how Christ dealt and who he dealt with read that Matthew 9 verse 10 this is the book of Matthew Chapter 9, verse 10. And it came to pass, uh -huh. as Jesus sat at meat in the house, uh -huh. behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him. So Jesus Christ sat down at meat with publicans and sinners. A lot of times people will look at us and be like, oh, why y'all at the bus station? These people don't need no help. These people are crackheads. They're never going to change. Or they're they, they in the midst of all type of knots. They're never going to change. But then when we go to the Christian church, they say the same thing. Why are you at the Christian church? They already got God. Or when we deal with the, the, the aristocratic so-called black people that be in Soda City, they act like they don't need God at all. Christ sat with everyone, though. And along with, read that again. And it came to pass, as Jesus sat at meat in the house, uh -huh. behold, many publicans and sinners came and sat down with him and his disciples. Many publicans and sinners sat down with him and his disciples. You're looking at Christ's disciples today. That's right. We are all disciples of Christ. Why? Because we are following his word and trying to apply the discipline that comes with the Holy Spirit. Right. The Holy Spirit is the application of the Most High's laws. So you're looking at Christ's disciples now. And that's why we're out here dealing with our brothers that are in this midst of sin. Right. And sisters, read them. And when the Pharisees saw it. But when the Pharisees saw it, that's those other sets of black people or other sets of Negroes out there. Read them. What did they say? They said unto his disciples. Why eateth your master with publicans and sinners? Why are you out here with these dope boys, these drug dealers, these crackheads, these Christians, these single mothers, these, these whores, these whoremongers, these drug addicts, drug abusers? Why are you sitting there with them? Why are you calling them into your sanctuary, into your schoolhouses to learn and to change? Why are you asking them to change? Read. But when Jesus heard that, when Christ heard that, watch what Christ said. Read. He said unto them, they that be whole need not a physician. It says if you're whole, you don't need a physician. Christ can't read. Read on. But they that are sick. Uh -huh. But they that are sick. Read. But go ye and learn what that meaneth. Christ told them, the same people that said, why are you dealing with these publicans and sinners? And today is what these, they, all our brothers and sisters are the midst of sin. He said, go and learn what that means. Why we're dealing with them. Read. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. Christ said he will have mercy though. What's the point of having mercy if you act like you don't need it? So the fact that you sit there and say you're not worthy, that's a good thing. But our job is to exhort you to understand that you are worthy of this thing. And that Christ is dealing with you as long as you're willing to change. You right. understand that and not stay the way you are. Read. For I am not come to call the righteous. Christ didn't come to call the righteous. So you got brothers now that think they're righteous. 
think they know everything, think they got the keys to the kingdom of heaven, yet they remain in the midst of sin. Yet they still smoke their cigarettes. Yet they still dress out of the most high God's dress code. They still eat shrimp, crab, pork, and lobster. They still sleep around with every woman and not try to marry them. Christ said what? Read it again. For I am not come to call the righteous. Christ didn't call, come to call the righteous. Read. But sinners to repentance. He came to call sinners to repentance. The officer brought out what repentance was. You got to learn the laws in order to know repentance. You understand that? Get Titus 3. Our job is not out here to judge our people. The most high God judges our people. You understand? <coughs> our job is to teach our people. Read. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. Hey, hold on a second. Hey, bro. What's going on, bro? Bro, you got a question? Hey, bro, you got a question? <coughs> hey, let's dialogue, bro. It ain't about that. We, we reading the Bible, right? We reading the Bible. Now you see what happens? This Bible brings spirits out. It brings demons out. Titus 3. Read that. The book of Titus, chapter 3, verse 3. That's part of the madness that our people are involved in right now. And we understand that our people are sick. Read. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish. That's what we're out here telling you. We ourselves were also were sometimes foolish. Read. Disobedient, deceived, serving divers' lusts and pleasures. We all come from that same world. We all were lost. My man that was talking about he was a more and sovereign. Some of us came from that same understanding. That's why we know we can teach that thing and we know that it's not real. Because there's no way in the world that we can be free and we're sitting here slaves, pay, living check to check, paying bills, taking a bus. So we come from that though. Read. Living in malice and envy. Hateful and hating one another. That's, we all come from that. And I think the misconception is they see us out here in purple. They see us reading the Bible. They see us dealing with our people and they think that we can't relate to them. Or that we're out here to pass judgment on them. No, our job is to try and correct our brothers and sisters so that the Most High God doesn't judge them. That's right. I don't think they understand that. Our people don't understand that we don't want the Most High God to deal with you. The Most High God is the king of... Get that in... um. Second Edris 16, where it says, God is the judge, fear him. 16 and 50 something. That's what we must understand. Look, it ain't about how much knowledge you know and all that, that earthly science and earthly understanding. You must know what sin is, what sin you're in, so that you can repent. Because you don't want to fall into the hands of God. <laughs> right. Most High God did this to us because we broke his commandments. The Most High God has us walking around where you can ask 10 black men what their nationality is and you get 10 different answers. That's confusion. God, only God can do that to you. The book of Second Edges, chapter 16, verse 63. This is what we're telling our brothers and sisters now and that's why we come out here to correct our people. We come from what you come from. Christ is, is reaching out his hand to the sinners. So you can't feel like you're not worthy of this walk here. Come bring your behind to the school and learn and, and clean yourself up so that you can get what's what you're what you're divinely given to. The most high give this to you. You're ordained to have the kingdom of heaven. You blot yourself out of that thing by not taking heed to his word. Read. Surely he knows your inventions and what you think in your hearts. Mm -hmm. Even them that sin and would hide their sin. Right. So I would, your job is not to hide your sin. The Most High knows exactly what every single one of us is doing. And he knows your heart. And it's not a good thing for God to know your heart because he knows that our hearts are desperately wicked and evil. Nothing good comes out of what comes from our mind. Read. Right. Therefore has the Lord exactly searched out all your works uh -huh. and he will put you all to shame. The Most High searched all of our works. Even the brother that walks around cursing us out. The brother that came up here and tore the flyer up without reading it. Just mad at life in general. You understand? He mad because he see brothers trying to change. Read. And when your sins are brought forth. Here's the thing that you need to be afraid of. Here's the thing that all of our brothers need to be afraid of. When your sins are brought forth. What is sin? He just brought, he, he taught what sin was. Now I want to make sure, make sure that you were paying attention. Sin is not doing right. It's not the law of God. Right. Sin is when you break God's laws. All praises. Right. You've been, and that's a good thing that you're learning. Right. Sin, so it says, read that again. And when your sin, 
I was brought forth. You shall be ashamed before men, and your own sins shall be accusers in that day. Your own sins are going to be your accusers in that day. So our job is to teach our people what sin is so we can turn from it. We're trying to save you from this here. Right. You understand that? But our people don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that they're doing wrong in order to change, man. They just don't want to give it up. They don't want to give it up, but here's this. Watch what they want to do. Here's what's going to happen, though. Read. And what will ye do? Uh -huh. And how will ye hide your sins before God and his angels? They tell you that sin is done away with and, and that um, God's laws are done away with and that Christ came so that you can sin. That's nonsense. This is a Bible here telling you that you're going to be judged based off the sins that you commit. What? If you reject the grace that comes with Jesus Christ and repentance. If you reject that thing, read. Behold, God himself is the judge. Says, Behold, who is the judge? God himself is the judge. No, the brothers that come out in purple and gold is the judge. Read it again. Behold, God himself is the judge. It says God himself is the judge. Do what? Fear him. Do what? Fear him. Go ahead. Leave off from your sin. So God is telling you to leave. He says fear him because you don't want to deal with his judgment at all. You're supposed to fear God. Don't worry about what we're saying. We're not judging you. We are correcting our brothers and sisters. We're teaching our brothers and sisters what sin is so that you can repent and get the kingdom of heaven That's and right. come out of this hell that you're in because you're not free and you're not saved at all. We're dead today. Black was a term used for dead at some point. Black meant dead and white meant life and free. Read. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities. Forget your sins. Read. To meddle no more with them forever. So to meddle no more with them forever. So when we learn sin, we learn to fight. The, we got to stop meddling with those things. Guess what? We still meddle with some of the sins that we're in now. We're not saying that we're floating on water like Christ. The same different things. Our thoughts. Adultery, damn covetous, all them things, we all have to battle. We battle because we know it's wrong. That's part of the reason why we wear our fringes. Get that numbers 15. There's a divine purpose behind, behind every law that the Most High God gives us. Right. And if we apply those laws, it'll keep us from his judgment. We got to understand that. Why do you think we wear fringes? I don't know. Huh? I don't know. Well, let's see why we wear fringes. Read. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 15, verse 38. Read out. Speak unto the children of Israel and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, uh -huh. and that they put upon the fringe of the borders a ribbon of blue. A ribbon of blue. So that's what you see, fringes and a ribbon of blue, right? right. So what happened was a brother was breaking the Most High God's Sabbath day, buying, selling. In his case, he was picking up sticks to cook, working and things of that nature, right? So the judgment had to come from God. Moses asked the Most High God what to do with this man. And God said, put that man to death. That was the judgment. So the Most High now gave us a little, he gave us something now to reflect on. How you doing, bro? He gave us something to do now. He said, put fringes upon the borders of your garments throughout your generation. And upon those fringes, put a, on the border, put a ribbon of blue. Here's the reason, read. And it shall be unto you for a fringe. For a fringe, read. That ye may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. That we must look upon the fringes and remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. Once you put those fringes on, guess what you're representing when you walk out in these streets? You're representing a disciple of the Most High God now. Right. You're representing an Israelite, one of God's chosen people that holds himself to the Most High God's laws. So there's no way in the world you're going to wear your fringes because think about it. When you wear, when we wear our fringes, we know people look at it and be like, damn, what's that on that brother's clothes? Why are they wearing those things on their clothes, right? So we know we stand out. Now think about it. You wearing your fringes and you going up into a damn uh, uh, a crack house to buy crack? That's that man of the Lord with fringes on buying crack? That's that man of the Lord with fringes on going and smoking weed with me? That's that man of the Lord wearing fringes and he's going to rob a bank now? No, because we know what fringes represent. So when you put your fringes on, your conscience now is, is eating at you. Damn, I got my fringe. Unless you're the devil that the Bible speaks of, it's some of those two. Right? But for the most part, you wear your fringes to do what? Read that again. For the top, 39. And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it. So when you're, when you're battling now, because it's a struggle. The script said don't meddle with your sins no more. 
and our minds always want us to start meddling with that little yeah. sin that we want to get away from. You walking past a bus stop and all you do is smell weed. If you, if you was a damn weed head that smoked weed every day, you get you start rubbing. You're like, damn, I know what that feels like. I know what that is, but I got my fringes on. Yeah. I got my fringes on now, and then you remember, oh, I'm an Israelite. Yeah. I can't do those things. That's the wrong thing to do. Right. There's a purpose behind the read. And remember all the commandments of the Lord and do them. That causes you to do them. Read. And that ye seek not after your own heart uh -huh. and your own eyes. And then you don't do what's in your mind because your mind is, is pushing you to do the wrong thing. The Most High has a fail safe for all of us and part of that is his dress code. And people like to think that the Most High's dress code is no, it's, it's, uh, who cares what you're wearing? No, it, it makes you who you are. And it actually governs how you conduct yourself. Right. The Most High's dress code read. After which you used to go a whoring. Right, because our own hearts and our own minds made us go a whoring. So God's laws has a purpose, just like the Most High's dress code. What's, right. what's your name, bro? Okay, your sister. What is your name? Huh? Niaja. Let me ask you a question. What is your nationality? Said black, right? Bro, what's your name? Um, Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. That's a biblical name. What is your nationality? Um, African American. African American. Bro, what's your name, bro? With the Colts jersey? Uh, Marshall Falk, huh? Tuan. Tuan. What's your nationality based on what you learned today? I am. I am. I am the, the, the brother of Judah. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah, but you see how interested it is. You're an Israelite from the tribe of Judah. He's an African American and he's black. You see the confusion? Right. Our job is to make sure every single one of us gets on that same one accord. That's which is, right. it starts with learning that you're an Israelite. Now, what we're telling you is how can you be an African American and he be black? Somebody got to be wrong, right? Which one is wrong? Both of you are wrong. Because those nationalities were given to you by your oppressors, the same people that did this to your forefathers. You understand that? Your true nationality is what's written in this Bible. You are actually Israelites according to the Bible. Yes. Now your next question should be, how do we know that? And why is it important? Is it important to know your nationality? It damn sure was important for them to change it. They right. made sure that your nationality changed about every 20 to 30 years. Right. So it was important for them to change it, then it has to be important for you to know it. Right. Do you think so? So how do we know that we Israel then? You see that Bible? Read what? What is the what is the title on that flyer? The truth about slavery. That's what we're dealing with our people on today. The truth about slavery is the people that actually went through the slave trade, transatlantic slave trade that came over on those slave ships. Sons and daughters were sold into captivity. Fathers backs beat. Mothers raped. That means that you're a child of the Most High God and that you are an Israelite. Because you suffered those things. That identifies who you are. Let's read that. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28. The book of Deuteronomy. No, leave that open. I, I hate that. to interrupt, but um, I have to go to work. But well, well I want you to listen to this real quick, real quick. What time you got to be to work? Um, 2 p.m. We're going to make sure you get to work on time. What time is it right now? It's 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m.? All right. All right. You got a grace period, right? Give me Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. Let's get straight to the point. Because these curses written in the Bible identifies who the Israelites are today. Is your slavery written in the Bible? How did our people get over here in America? How you doing, bro? How did our people get over here in America? On boats, right? Our people came over here on boats. Correct, sir, with the, with the blue Indianapolis coats hat on. Good, listen, but we need you to participate too. Read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. We're bringing out the black man's history in the Bible. Right. Black history is written in the Bible. Your history is written in the Bible. The truth right. about who you are is in the Bible. Read. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. The Most High God is going to send the Israelites into Egypt again with ships. What is Egypt? Read that. The Exodus 20. The book of Exodus, 
chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. That Egypt is synonymous with bondage. Another word for bondage is slavery. That's right. Slavery, bondage, Egypt. That's what it means. Read now Deuteronomy 28. Read it from the top. And the Lord, Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. It with said the Most High God is going to bring the Israelites into slavery again with what? With ship on cargo slave ships. That is written in the Bible. Right. Read. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, Go ahead. thou shalt see it no more again. You'll never see Egypt or your homeland again. Or your homeland again. Even if you want to go back to Africa, you can't make it back there. And your homeland is Jerusalem, right. which is part of Africa. Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. What happened to us when we got off on those slave ships, brother with the dreads? What happened to our people when we got off the slave ships? We were captured and became slaves. We were bought and sold like cattle. We were traded on auction blocks. Our mothers were, were stripped naked, topless, and said this would be a good bed wench. This would be a good milk maid. This would be a, a good um, um, made in the house. All those different things. Our men, just like they do in the NFL. He talked about it yesterday. They were lined up, taking their reach, taking their, their height, their weight. All right, this would be a good buck to breed with. This nigga need to go pick cotton. This one here will play with the little kids. That happened during slavery. This one could be a house nigga, but guess what we got to do to them house Negroes? Because people act like the house Negro had a good job in the house. He was in the house just living it up with master, right? No, the house Negro had his balls chopped off. The house Negro was buck broke. The house Negro had to go through hell in order to be in the house because master didn't want him to lust and sleep after his wife. So the house Negro, yes, he was lived in the house, but he had his, he had to be castrated because he could not have no sexual desire in the house. The only one that had to have sexual desire was that buck that they wanted to breed with. They'll breed him with his own mother. They'll breed him with your daughter. They'll breed him with anybody who wants you to make another slave to keep their economy going. So no slave had it good. Let's get that, don't get that twisted. Even the house bed wench, she didn't have it good. Because she had to sleep with every single master that came into the house, if they wanted them to. So no part of that was a good thing. Read that again. You shall be sold. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. For what? For, for bondmen and for slave men and bond women. And no man shall buy you. No man ever redeemed us from, hey, get the job on time. But guess what? Hey, check that flyer out. No, who tried to redeem us from these curses? How many men have tried to free the so-called black man in society today? How many? We have, uh, what, Malcolm X tried with the Nation of Islam. Marcus Garvey, Marcus Garvey tried with, um, that was the Pan-African movement. Right. Um, Martin Luther King and the Civil Rights Movement, Christianity, right, bro? Who else? The, the Black Panthers? All of these brothers had great ideas. And all of these brothers had the right mission. And guess what? All of these brothers gave their lives for their people. Right. So we don't disrespect anything that them brothers represented. But the one thing that them brothers didn't have was what our true... Matter of fact, Malcolm X knew. Because he talks about who the children of Israel was. But he wasn't behind the God's laws behind it. He, had, he mixed it in with Islam, which did not work because we're not Muslims. Right. The Muslims is an Arab religion that we were taught while we were being enslaved by them. That was forced on us in Africa. Right. That's why when you see some slave ships come over, some of the slaves were Muslim. But then you got some of the Moorish blacks that were over there in Europe. They were Judaic. They followed Judaism. They were so-called Christians. Read that again from the top. And Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Going over the history, the slave ships that our people came on was written in this Bible. Our history begins way before what they teach us in the schools about black history. Black history does not start with slavery. Black history starts with Genesis chapter 1, verse 1. Black history starts with John chapter 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. The Word was God. 
That's black history because all people were black people. Adam was a black man. Right. That's our history. Right. Read. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Go ahead. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. You shall be sold unto who? Unto your enemies. For what? For bondmen and bondwomen. And no man shall buy you. So no man redeemed us from the hands of our enemies. Right. Let me ask you a question. Did that happen to our people now, bro? Whatever. Did that happen to our people? The slave ships being bought and sold and things of that nature. Okay. Let me give you another one now. Give me proverb and byword. What was that, 37? Yeah. Verse 37. Read that. These curses are here to identify who the Israelites are. Read. There's the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 37. Go ahead. And thou shalt become an astonishment. It says, thou shalt become an astonishment to so-called black man and woman, Hispanic man and woman, Native American man and woman have become an astonishment. Right. Look at our people today. You're not astonished at the way our people look? Bring it out. We, we had a bus stop and we got brothers strung out on crack talking nonsense about the men of the Lord telling you to stop doing crack. That's madness. How in the world you got a problem with brothers trying to tell you, hey sis, stop sleeping with every man just to make a dollar and go ahead, get a job and save yourself from your husband. How is that wrong? That's an astonishment. Read. A proverb. A proverb is a wise saying. If you want to hide anything from a black man, do what? If you want to hide anything from a black man, do what? Put him in a book. Because our brothers don't read. That's a proverb, man. It's true, too. If you want to hide anything from a black man, put it in a book. It's especially this book here, the Bible, because our brothers are afraid to read that thing. Read. And a byword. And a byword when you're called outside of your nationality. Being called black is a byword. African American is a byword. Right. Spanish is a byword. That is not your nationality. Right. Your nationality is you're a prince that has power with God. You are Israelites. That's right. That is a curse to call yourself African American because that was given to you by your oppressors. And Africa and America is named after two so-called white men. Right. But we ignorantly walk past that thing. Give me verse 64 now. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. So the bottom line is we're going over these curses because these curses identify who the Israelites are today. You understand that, bro? So I'm going to ask you after this one here, what is your nationality? Read. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, uh -huh. from the one end of the earth un even unto the other. We were scattered among all people on slave ships. This happened to us right here. Did this not happen to our people? Slavery on slave ships on these boats here. That happened, right? You mentioned boats. This is what happened. It was slave ships, and they brought us to South America, North America, Europe, Asia, Russia, all those different places. We were scattered. Read. And there thou shalt serve other gods. And now, as we get in these lands, we're serving other gods. Read. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Uh -huh. Even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. That's why you see the so-called black man. You got a household with our people. The mother's a Christian Baptist. The father is a Muslim. And the daughter is a Buddhist. You know. That's straight confusion. But that's our people though. Right. That wood is going into Christianity. The cross. Our fathers didn't know nothing about no, no Christianity. Christianity was forcing our people, whipped on our backs, and now we just take, take heed to that nonsense. Right. And we love it. Love lies instead of our true nationality and our heritage. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. 
Europe, or Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.